Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Before we get going on this episode, I want to thank the sponsors of the podcast. I want to thank GoHunt.com, Cody Nelson, my friend of 20 plus years. I call him the glassing guru, the optics authority. He's the optics manager at GoHunt.com. If you guys have any optics needs at all, whether it be binoculars, spotting scopes, rifle scopes, tripods, anything to do with glassing, give the glassing guru a call. You can reach Cody at 702-847-8747. That's extension 2. You can email him at optics at gohunt.com or you can text him directly on his cell phone at 602-399-3699. Ask him any question either by text or by call. I want to thank Cody for all the work that he does with the J. Scott Outdoors podcast listeners. I also want to remind you guys it's application season. There's not a better hunting resource than the Go Hunt Insider. Uh, for a free trial, you can go to gohunt.com forward slash J. Scott. You can also get a $50 Go Hunt Gear Shop gift card when signing up. Uh, I want to thank kuyu.com, uh, kuyu ultralight hunting. Kuyu is the ultralight hunting gear that I've been wearing since 2010. Uh, go to KUIU.com and you can order directly. It's a direct to consumer uh, brand and they have phenomenal gear there at KUIU.com. I uh, also want to thank Phonescope.com. Use the JSCOT21 promo code to get 10% off on all orders. Uh, guys, thanks for listening to the podcast. Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. I've got my friend Parker Fails, who guides with Clay Bundy up on the Arizona Strip. Parker, how you doing? Hey, doing great, Jay. How you doing, man? Good. Congratulations. I know you uh, coach uh, and your brother is on the Beaver uh, Utah uh, baseball team, and it looks like they just won the state championship. Con- congrats to the whole town. Congrats to you as a coach, and I know you helped them out and, and the players as well. Hey, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. The uh, yeah, We had a great group of kids, just a gritty group of uh, good small-town boys, and they made an incredible run, and it was fun to be part of history with them. That's, That's really sure. neat. I know you played baseball yourself, so I know to um, be able to give some of the wisdom and you know, not only help them with their physical skills, but their mental skills and how to play the game, I'm sure um, you were an integral part of that. So congratulations. Um, the last time I saw you, you were down with me uh, in Mexico helping me guide uh, coos deer hunters down in Mexico, and now I've got you on the phone. We are sitting uh, looking at the Arizona application deadline coming up uh, here, I believe, June 9th, so we're a couple of weeks away. I wanted to get uh, your take, and, and I'm going to be talking to Clay as well. Uh, about the strip, about conditions, what you're seeing, and kind of get the full scoop. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like I said, I'm kind of taking the realist approach. Um, in my mind, 2021 on the Arizona Strip is going to be very similar to 2020. Um, I mean, you know, what's crazy is last year we got we got pretty dang good spring moisture. Um, and that's really, that's what's carried everything through, through last year and even into the first part of this year. And this spring, we just have not gotten that moisture like we got last year. Right. And so, um, and so I don't know, I just, I think it's going to be very, I don't think it's going to be any worse than last year, but I don't think it's going to be any better either. I think it's going to be very similar to what we saw last year. Okay. So similar conditions to last year, there were still some really nice bucks taken. Um, You know, I think the people with the super high uh, bonus points, those max bonus point holders and those guys that are maybe one under, uh, you know, all are looking at it, wondering what to do. Um, You know, it's it's an amazing place because you could be talking about, let's call it a uh, not as great of a banner year or you know just an average year and you're still having opportunities at 200 inch bucks right i mean there's still yes. going to be 200 inch bucks killed on the arizona strip this year yes absolutely yeah after last year i mean we still i can't remember the exact number but we still had a an average of way over 200 i mean all the bucks we killed with an average and that was on a 
I was in 2020, you know, which is which was not a great year. So can things, you know, elk finished growing cycle a lot earlier than deer. Is it possible that if we had a early monsoon, let's just play the, the eternal optimist here and say that we did have early showers and, and we got some June showers, is it possible and and then let's say we followed up with you know lots of steady showers in June. Is it possible that that it could rally and be better than better than average, or would you say no? Even with showers, it's probably just going to be average. No, I I believe Jay. If we could, I mean, it's got to start. It's got to start right now. But if it can start right now and and take us through July, I w- w- we would be just fine. We would do great. It's just like place. Place always told me that the Arizona Strip will promise you less and give you more than any other place on Earth. Yeah. And uh, and it's really that kind of place. I mean, once it gets some moisture, it rebounds so fast. It's just uh, everything's everything's right to make giant mule deer out there. And so if we can get these storms in these critical months, which you know we're in right now, um, we missed the first part of May, but if we can hit it now and then go through June and July, um, I really, I really. I'd be really excited. Let's talk about holdover bucks because I know that was a topic last year where, uh, you know, several of the guys, including yourself and Clay and other guys that I talked to, you know, thought that there were bucks that, that, you know, holdover bucks that maybe didn't get shot for one reason or another, maybe had broken points, uh, maybe just didn't, didn't grow like they thought, so they got a pass. Um, putting another eight, uh, year of age on those deer, do you think that th- there'll be a few surprisers out there that maybe even on a rough year will, you know, grow into something pretty cool? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think you'll have those on the strip every year. Um, these young deer, these young deer are just special. Um, I mean, one just one that comes to mind from last year, you know, that double drop time buck we killed in the archery hunt. Um, he was one that actually kind of, you know, exploded really um, out of nowhere and ended up being just a, an absolute awesome buck. I think he was like 226. And um, I think it's very capable that some more of these bucks could, could, do, could do what that buck did. Um, let's talk about the season structure. I'm not aware of any major changes with the tag allocations uh, on the archery or on the rifle, and you can correct me if, if I'm missing something. Um, w- with the conditions the way that they are, uh, and, and well, let me ask you, the conditions as they sit right now, are there tons of dirt tanks that are completely dry? Um, are the deer just relying on um, drinker water? What What is the situation both on A and on B? Yeah, yep, Jay. Um, dirt tanks are dry, completely dry. Um, deer and cows alike are relying on drinkers. Um, and uh, you'll talk with Clay, but I think just this week he was pulling his cows off of the Arizona Strip and bringing them into Utah. And I don't know when is the last time, if ever, that he's had to do that, that the water situation was so bad. So with that being said, um, and with trail cameras still being legal, um, there's going to be a chance to be able to get some pretty good inventory of bucks out there because they, they don't have a ton of choices to water. From an inventory standpoint alone, do you feel like this this summer might be one of the best opportunities you guys have ever had to inventory bucks? Um, you know, yeah, I think it'd be very similar to last year. Um, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if it'd be any worse or any better, but I believe that, I mean, last year, I mean, it was just dry. So I, you had a pretty good idea of everything that's there, um, and that's going to be the same case this year. And so with that being said, yeah, we'll know, we should know everything that's out there. And then, and there's always a few surprisers, um, that can live on some dirt tanks that don't, that don't go empty, that are big, you know, um, but that, with that being said, it can make for an awesome archery hunt as well, which we've seen last year and also the year before, even in 2019 with the great antler growth of that year, it was a dry monsoon. And so those bucks were pounding water. And, uh, man, it just makes them, makes them real killable. 
For sure, and that's kind of where I was going. Um, if there is any silver lining, which, you know, as hunters, we always want wet and we want the animals in good a condition as possible, antlers doing as good as possible, just, you know, good for the whole. Uh, but with that being said, if it is a dry monsoon, the archery hunt could be just dynamite, right? Yes, yep, and that's like I just said, that's what we saw last year. Um, we did kill one buck off water. Um, killed we killed a double drop to top, drop time buck um spot and stock uh, but he was just uh he was a regular to water they were just pounding water and so you know they become very patternable and uh once they do that they're in trouble and so yeah that you're exactly right that could be the one one silver lining to uh to the woes and misery of a dry year if if you had to pick 13a or 13b do you have a favorite regardless of of weapon choice just do you have a favorite in units oh man <laughs> you know what i don't know that i have a favorite it's all um man i love every inch of it okay. um I, I ran 13b hard i ran last year i ran 13a really hard um, my camera route was all a 13a covering the that side of things and uh i love every inch of that too so i don't know that i could pick a or b which one i like better um well let me ask you this question with that being said not not picking sides um do you believe that b or a or a or b is better for archery hunting specifically is there one that's better and then i'm going to ask you the same question on the rifle and it may have to do with timing of season just just give me your opinion this year if you feel like there's one unit that may have an edge over the other as far as archery? Um, as far as archery goes, I think, I mean, honestly, I think I would rather have a 13A archery tag. Um, and that's that's always been what, the way Clay's felt as well. And uh, through the years, you know, going with him and singing, I, I understand why there's, uh, you know, there's some deer that, that winter down on 13B that actually summer up on 13A. Um, and they're, and they're pretty dang huntable. Um, and so just, just for that, I, I would say I'd like 13A for the archery. Um, and really, you know, if we're talking both units right now, I mean, I think the holdover bucks are maybe even a little bit better on 13A than they are on 13B right now. Okay. And then the rifle hunt, uh, B goes first and A is second. Um, does that flip flop for you, and do you switch over to to liking B the best for rifle, or do you still like A the best this year for rifle? Um, you know, from a guide standpoint, I do like B because B is bigger, as as in there's more deer habitat, so you can um, so you're not so it's not everything's not so crowded. Um, places can become crowded, you know, where the where the top quality bucks are living. Things can get a little tight with other hunters and pressure. Um, so from that standpoint, I like 13B just because there is more deer. There's more deer habitat throughout the entire unit. And with that, there's typically more deer to hunt and uh, more area to get away from people. If that makes sense. Yeah, understood. Um, all right. So we're, we also, we'll come back to the deer, but I do want to ask you a couple questions. Uh, we are also looking at the sheep applications. Uh, I know you have helped uh, Clay uh, on, the, on the sheep there on the Arizona Strip. Uh, is there one unit uh, that, that you like over any of the others up there in that country that you guys hunt? You know, I, I really like 13B North um, just because of... Uh, just because of how huntable it is and how accessible everything is, um, and there's and there's a, I mean there's a good amount of sheep in there, and over the years it's produced some some great sheep. Um, you know, Clay really likes, and you know you have to be a resident only for 13B South. And um, the last couple of years, um, I think two years ago, Clay Clay went down. I wasn't there the day they killed it, but they killed a 167 ram out of that unit. Um, and then he Clay, helped some guy with some information last year on a good ram too. Correct. Right? Yeah. Yep. Correct. He gave some guy a guy that we thought was a do it yourself in last year some information on a ram, and he ended up killing a, a big heavy ram. I'm not sure what it scored. I didn't hear, but it was a it was an awesome ram too. Um, um, 
With that being said, do, do you feel like it seems like I've been in 13B North a little bit and it, it fe I feel like the quality might have gone down just a little bit and I wonder if that's because of the pressure in Utah because I know those Rams go back and forth yes. between Utah and Arizona. I feel like they've hit Utah pretty hard and I yep. think that's affected the quality. Is that, you, you agree with that? Yes, you're exactly right, Jay. Um, the quality is down in 13B North, and uh, it is. It's like those those sheep are getting double dipped on. Um, it's like they whack them in Utah and they whack them in Arizona, and so um, it's just hard. It's hard for the for the unit to rebound, and uh, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing 13B North slip. Um, now, granted, there's always going to be a ram that gets through. I mean, it wasn't just what two years ago that I think Alicia Hatch killed her ram out of there. Um, it was a 172, just incredible heavy ram. Um, and so it's a it's a unit that's rugged enough that there's always some sheep that can get away and hold a sleeper. And, uh, and two, some of those sheep come in from Utah and they cross back and forth. And so you can get a ram out of Utah crossing into Arizona as well. Um, back to the deer. Um, and you've been working with Clay for some time now. And I've, I've talked to you about this before on the podcast, but... Um, you know, what is it like to be able to have a mentor that knows the Arizona Strip as well as Clay does? And, and um, do you feel like you fully grasp the, the, the potential that you've had to be around Clay and learn from him? Or do you feel like being around him so much, you some, it sometimes slipped through the cracks? I'm just curious your thoughts on, on the mentorship and the amount of stuff that he has that he, he, he doesn't even think about that he knows that's kind of bled through to you just by osmosis of being around him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like we talked before, I cannot imagine having, having a better mentor. Um, as good as play is at Kellen Dare, he's even a better person. Um, and the knowledge he has of the Arizona Strip and, you know, the way these deer act and how they behave and, and, um, and what they're thinking, it, it's just absolutely incredible. And I'm still learning every day. I mean, I talk to him at least once a day on the phone, and every time we get talking about deer, they're still, you know, what, you just get there thinking you know it all. You're one of these young know-it-alls. And uh, he teaches you something else, yeah. and so it's just been it's just been absolutely incredible to uh, to be able to go to Clay, and you know and that's what's so great is uh, is I have acqui acquired his knowledge, and I, I compound some of my own, and then you know when we're hunting and I'm with a client, and you know things are tough, I can go to Clay, and uh, I can I can lean on him, and he uh, man, it just seems like he always makes the right call, and he always knows where they're going to be and where I need to be. And so it's, uh, it's, it's special to have the ball that I do with Clay, and I'm, I'm grateful every day for it. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, um, you know, we're sitting here uh, kind of on pins and needles, definitely hoping that we get some monsoon moisture. I know uh, there were all the ranchers up there, including Clay, and I mean certainly the deer hunters as well that, that want to have a good deer hunt, want as much moisture as we possibly can. And, you know, there's some things we can control and some things we can't. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we have no control over that. But um, we got to be optimistic. So with it being dry like it is, when when would you normally start your um, trail camera run where you where you get everything up and running and, and running for the summer? Is it still pre too premature right now with the antlers and, and such not with not much development yeah yeah we usually will give it till the end of this month and get started about the first or or the start of the second week of june um and that's the time we'll start hitting it hitting it hard we'll all separate on our routes um slapping up cameras getting them up it's still you know it's a little premature to glass um but we let those cameras we like to get them in there early let them soak um, with, with some information and then um, you know once July 1 hits that's when uh, that's when we really get the boot leather on the ground and we start getting all the knobs and uh, get behind the glass and you know covering the country the cameras can't and that's probably our most favorite time of year that's when we get most of our phone scope footage and I would dare say for me and, and probably even for Clay that we enjoy that part of it more than we enjoy the hunts being out there um just because you know, there's not as much pressure and, and you're just enjoying it for what it is. 
Yes, exactly. Not as much pressure. That, and there's no, you don't see all the people, you know, there's some outfitters that'll come out and check their cameras, but you don't see all the people like you get during the hunts. Um, you can go days without seeing another person and, um, and just filming giant bucks. I mean, it's just the, it's like Jurassic Park. It's just a special <laughs> place, you know. That's awesome. I want to ask you a couple quick questions, and then I'm going to let you go. Um, as far as gear and equipment, um, you were down hunting coos with me. Phenomenal glasser. Um, what are your go-to uh, binoculars and your go-to tripod setup uh, for glassing on the Arizona Strip? Yeah. Um, so I, man, I I live off the Swarovski 15s. Um, just like I know you do, Jay. They are just in my mind they're irreplaceable um especially out here in the west and on the strip the you know some of the long distance blasting we're doing um the the swarovski 15s are just absolutely incredible um i never i never leave the truck or leave headed down there without them um i, I really can't say enough enough good about them i feel like those binoculars have killed more big deer than any gun caliber in america yep. um uh, what about and tripod? That, I know you use a little bit different tripod. Um, yeah, using. yeah. So I, I use it. The tripod is called, it's called a recon. Um, there's a guy here out of St. George um, that, that made them. Um, and we've been running those for about three years now. And it, it's a little bit heavy, um, but it, that's why I like it. It's a little bit heavier, a little bit more stability to it. Um, it can take, you know, take the weight of my BTX. I've got my BTX 95 that I can throw on there and it hand, seems to handle the weight really well with that. And, um, and with that, I run the, I run the Manfrotto 500 AH head. Um, I really like that. It's got the long plate. Um, and it just, you know, it's awesome for the big glass, like my BTX, it, um, distributes the weight really well and it, you know, don't get that vibration and uh it works great for my 15s and my btx so a little by, bit heavier setup but I, I i like using a little bit heavier yeah so by having thicker diameter legs on the tripod and having having a, a heavier head if you will a heavier duty head you feel like you make up for the weight factor by having a more stable platform and less vibration Correct. Yeah, that's how I feel, and I and I've had some guys give me crap that I'm I'm a little bit overkill with my with the head and what I'm using, but uh, but that that's my belief, and I and I that's just what I believe. I enjoy, I like a good solid steady glass with with no vibration. I can sit behind all day because there's lots of uh, there's lots of hours spent behind those things throughout sure. the summer and fall. And then so. your your. Go to trail cameras. Are there? Are you running anything new this year, or what? What cameras do you have the most most faith in, or do you have a, yes. a bunch of different cameras you run? Yeah, we've been running. Um, as of late, we've been running a lot of the new uh, the G forty five Max and the G thirty four Max stealth cams that are out, um, and they are incredible. They're like a thirty two megapixel, um, and they they're, they're great, great cameras. Um, and then I think probably my most favorite camera though is probably the G34 Pro. It's still a little older, and I don't even actually think you can find it anymore on stealth cam. They've like discontinued them, but th those dang cameras just they don't miss anything, and they they're just like indestructible. Um, but the newer the newer stealth cams they're pretty dang impressive. The 32 uh, megapixel lands on them, crisp, clear pictures. Um, they've got great video, 1080 video, HD video, um, and so those are the cameras that we've really been been hammering with the last couple of years. When do you transition? Let's say you have a handful of bucks that you really want to get video of. When do you kind of transition as a guide to running more video than pictures and and trying to get? Um, you know, those, those quality clips so you can really look at those bucks. Like what, what time of the year is it, you know, June, July, August, when is that? Yeah. Um, so, you know, if, if there's a deer that's hitting a, a dirt tank or a pond, um, we like running our cameras on video mode. Um, simply for the fact is, is you, you're covering a big area, right? Um, and so it is difficult to get, to get a, 
just a great picture of a deer on a dirt tank. So it seems like you always get a flash and you'll get the one horn and then their, their butt as they're walking through, you know? Um, and so we like to flip our cameras on ponds on the video. And so that we get, you don't miss anything. There's no breaks. Um, and we found that to be, we've really been running that hard on these new cameras. Um, and as far as, you know, uh, trick tanks and catchments go, it would probably be later in July that we flip those over when the bucks are, are grown out late July, 1st of August, when they're grown out where we want to get the, you know, the new great video of them to get all the angles. Um, but until up until then, it's really not necessary until they're all the way grown out. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, Parker, it's always great having you on the podcast. Thanks for giving us the update on the strip. I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you later this fall and, and watching you guys, uh, your success. I recommend if anybody has any questions about the Arizona Strip to give uh, Parker a call. Parker, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? Yeah, you can um, you can call or text me anytime at 435-421-9463 or shoot me a DM, a direct message on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at, par- or at Parker underscore Fells. So it's Parker underscore Fells. And that's um, F- to- F-A-I-L-S, yep. Fails. Correct. Right. Yep. Yep, and it's just like you fell a test, but like I told you before, my middle name's never. So <laughs> <laughs> Parker never so, fails. I love it. That's right. So right yeah, on, feel, buddy. feel free to reach out to me anytime, and I appreciate you, Jay. And it's always a pleasure to be able to visit with you. And I uh, can't wait to get uh, get back up on the knob and and learn what I can from you some more. So. Sounds good, buddy. Well, I'm looking forward to it, and let's hope that it starts raining and. Um, I look forward to seeing all the velvet uh, mule deer picks and stuff. So it's, uh, you know, even a, even a, on a dry year, you're going to be on the Arizona Strip in the summer, and uh, life is good. So um, Absolutely. good to talk to you. Congrats again on the state champion uh, winning uh, baseball team. And uh, I know the town of Beaver's got to be just ecstatic. So um, that's that's fantastic for the whole the whole town and uh, God bless and I'll be chatting at you later okay okay sounds great Jay God bless and uh, we'll talk to you soon okay bye.